Welcome to the Crazy Hat Chemist. So another video here on thermochemistry. Before we get started though, I've got a great t-shirt here for you. You can order these if you donate to my website. All right, see me on the web. All right, so here we go. Let's do this next video here on thermochemistry. Bam! So today we are talking about thermochemistry calculation number two. It says, what is the specific heat of copper given the below information? The copper's mass is 43 grams and the heat liberated is 0.48095 kilojoules with a temperature change from 5.0 degrees Celsius to 34.0 degrees Celsius. So the question is, what equation are we using in this calculation and how do we go about this problem here? So this is, of course, the equation that we're using, and this is Q equals MC delta T. And we've gone over this equation a couple of different times. Make sure you review those videos. Q equals M cat. That's how I remember it. The delta T is the final temperature minus the initial temperature. So I've gone ahead and replaced the delta T and substituted in what delta T is equal to, and that's TF minus TI. So let's figure out what are we solving for on this problem. First of all, we are solving for the CP. That is the specific heat capacity for the copper. That's what we're going to solve for. Then, from this information here, where does this information go into this equation? So, this is what we've got. We've got our heat term is the Q. Now, it is in kilojoules, and we're going to have to convert that into joules. So hopefully you remember that calculation, that conversion. Okay, the mass is right here at 43 grams. We're going to plug that right in for the M for the mass. Okay, the final temperature is the ending temperature, and that's the 34.0 degrees Celsius. The beginning temperature, that's where the temperature starts off at, is 5.0 degrees Celsius, and that is right there. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to take this temperature here at, sorry, we're going to take the um, heat term, and that is the kilojoule term, and convert that into joules. And that's what we're doing right here. We're going to take those kilojoules and divide by one kilojoule times a thousand joules, and that will give me the joules that I have. So the joules that I have is 480.095 joules now. Okay, now we're going to plug in the rest of the information and solve for the specific heat capacity. So this is what I've done right here. I've substituted in into that equation of Q equals MC delta T. And the Q term, the heat term, is 480.095 joules. The mass term is 43 grams. The specific heat capacity is the red CP. And you should see that I put in the units for the specific heat capacity, which is joules per gram degree Celsius. Then, on the far right-hand side of this, you should see that I have the final temperature at 34.0 minus the initial temperature at 5.0 degrees Celsius. Okay, we're going to rearrange this and solve for the specific heat capacity. That is dividing both sides by the mass and the delta T. That's the change in temperature. So I've done that for you right here. I've got my 480.095 joules in the numerator, my mass in the denominator at 43 grams, and then my delta T, that's the change in temperature at 29.0 degrees Celsius, also in the denominator. You should see that before you carry on and plug these numbers in your calculator, you're going to get the units that you would expect to get for the specific heat capacity, which would be joules per gram degree Celsius. Okay, so now you're going to take the 480.095, divide by 43, and then divide by 29.0, and you're looking at the fewest number of significant figures, which is 2 in this particular problem. Okay, and so I'm going to round my number to two significant figures. So I have a number for the specific heat capacity of 0 0.39 joules per gram degree Celsius. Okay, I'm thinking that that number, does that number make sense? Well, it is copper. It is a metal. So certainly the specific heat of metals are definitely less than one. I haven't come across very many metals that their specific heat is greater than one. Aluminum specific heat is a very low mass metal, okay? So a low mass metal has a very high specific heat of zero, uh, or sorry, 0.9 joules per gram degree Celsius for aluminum. Whereas a very dense metal like gold or lead has a very low specific heat of 0.1, 
okay, joules per gram degree Celsius. So make sure you keep that in mind. Now, aluminum uh, is very low in density. Gold is very high in density. Aluminum specific heat is very high, okay, and gold's uh, specific heat is very low. It's an inverse relationship here with specific heat and density of that object or of that element. Okay, now copper is right in line of this here, and that would make a perfect number there. It's not super dense, it's not super not dense, as the case may be. Okay, so hopefully that worked out well for you. Okay, you can trust me, I would never, never try to harm you. Now eat your PB and jelly sandwich. That's a little bit of elemental humor here for you. And there's a peanut butter and jelly sandwich that I've made just for you. And of course, I'm gonna end with a crazy hat. So um, please give me a thumbs up on that video. Subscribe to my YouTube channel, and I'm gonna see you next time for more thermochemistry videos. Bye for now.